Welcome to the channel, Flats Class fans. And I'm breaking down some gear from a recent trip over to Mosquito Lagoon where I fished with Captain Justin Price. Over there, we were targeting a lot of black drum and tailing redfish. Uh, came up with a couple of speckled trout as well. Uh, it was for an episode of Flats Class TV that will air this year on Waypoint Television and Valley Sports. So look for that coming soon. Uh, Mosquito Lagoon, a very delicate ecosystem. Um, I felt like both Captain Justin Price and Captain Scott McCalla did a good job of making me understand of the fragility of this fishery. Um, but to break it down for you guys, as far as baits, such as the trick shots, this is something that you can use anywhere for tailing redfish and black drum. And that's what we're going to talk about now. Folks, I'm going to apologize up front. My voice is a little bit altered. Uh, I have got some allergy stuff going on this spring. It's been amazing. Now, you can see I live amongst the, the pines and the oaks here on the Nature Coast. So, probably a little more susceptible than most. But I have never dealt with it like I have this year. And I think it's just because it has been so dry uh, in regards to rainfall. And it's been windy. Super, super windy. But let's talk about this particular bait this bait is the trick shots now the trick shots comes in two sizes it comes in this size which is the 3.5 version and it also comes in the 4.2 version now originally designed to be more of a drop shot bait or a shaky head bait for the bass market uh, it has turned into an incredible, I mean, an incredible inshore bait. And the reason why is the buoyant quality uh, of this bait. But when you really look at this bait, it's windy, talk about windy. You can see the spade tail and it kind of hangs up off the bottom. So when this bait is lying on the bottom like this, this tail kind of just sticks up there, this little highly buoyant spade tail and just kind of wiggles when you tremble the rod tip. So when you're fishing for tailing redfish like this one here that Justin Price is holding, one that I caught on the show, pretty impressive, you can make this presentation, the bait is very small, it's very light, you can make a cast past the group of tailing fish, whether they be drum or reds, and you can reel it up across the surface where it won't make any noise at all and then just drop it on the other side of them. That way you're not pulsing the bait or the line, the braid through the group of fish and alerting them that you're there. This way you come up to the edge of them and then you only have to lift it a few times and they'll see that tail and they think they literally flushed it out of the grass and you get walloped. I mean, really walloped. This bait was, was unbelievable. Uh, tried some other colors, but it seems like this Gobi Bryant color, and I believe that's one of the colors from Brian Latimer. Um, if you don't follow B Lat, you need to follow his channel here on the on YouTube. But pretty incredible. Now let's break the rod and reel setup down for what I'm going to show you right now. How you can throw this. All right, let's talk about the rod and reel setup uh, that I'm using to swing this little small bait. Now, naturally, I would have a lot of options if I were throwing my BFS rig or if I was throwing maybe some of my smaller Zodius stuff with the smaller Vanford reels. But because the fish uh, that were, were around in this uh, particular scenario were very large, I wanted to have something a little bit more substantial, but it still had to be light enough to be able to throw that little, that little trick shots. So I opted for this. This is the Terramar PX, and it's in the, uh, let me lift the line up here. This is in the medium light. This is a six foot eight length rod. Now, I like this setup uh, or this particular model for sight fishing 
it gives me, it'll throw everything like it said on the specs from an eighth all the way to three quarter. So if I want to switch up and throw top water, which I did in this uh, particular episode, I can. But for the most part, this rod is a really good, set. boy, there goes that wind again. This rod is a really good setup for sight fishing because of its short length. I'm able to make these quick casts that are close to the boat, just like I would with a bait casting rod, yet it's light enough to throw. Now I pack, this is a 3000 Vanford, uh, Shimano Vanford reel, and it's loaded with eight pound Moss Green uh, Power Pro Super Slick V2. I also tied on four feet of 15 pound, this is Seaguar Gold. Uh, this is a little thinner, a little higher quality uh, from the Seaguar folks on the fluorocarbon side. So I've got that connected with a modified Albright right there. Very small knot, so this rolls through the guides. And then the piece of terminal tackle that I'm using, uh, if you look here real close, it, this is the uh, Finesse Bullets. It's a very light wire, one-tenth of an ounce, but you got to remember, once you add the plastic, you're right back there at an eighth. Uh, and, and making short casts like I did in this episode, uh, really, you know, this lent itself to be really nice because it landed soft. Uh, I could still make a cast up to 80, 90 feet with this setup. Uh, and it was accurate. It was super, super accurate. So that that's the business. And now let's talk a little bit more about the trick shots on the physical attributes other than that spade tail always hanging up like this feature. So let me show you this. This is a feature that you don't see on the surface when you pick this bait up, but it has like these little ribs that run down the length of the body. What would they be good for? Well, if you're using a gel scent like Procure, they're going to be awesome because they're gonna hold the scent on there for a longer period of time. That's important when you're dead sticking the bait or moving it really slow into a group of tailing black drum or redfish because they're gonna, it's gonna to appeal to one more sense. The other thing it does is if you do give it a snapping, you know, almost a snapping retrieve every once in a while, it traps bubbles or air and makes a noise, a gurgle noise underneath the water that the fish can feel in their lateral line or hear. They actually can hear the bait. Now, naturally that spade tail has a wild action behind this because even holding this thing, this thing moves a lot. You can only imagine what it does in the water. It looks alive. And those ribs that I was showing you earlier also give this a little thinner feel to it so it bends a lot easier just because there's less material there. This action on this looks like an invertebrate that would be on the bottom living in the grass. That's why these fish trash this bait. I mean, they crush it. Uh, you can rig it on a football head. You can rig it on a shaky head. Um, you can rig it on those pro bullets, uh, those finesse pro bullets, and they come in some super light sizes. You don't always have to use a heavyweight jig. If you're fishing a little deeper, of course you could, but it might be better at that point to go back to what I said earlier and use it more on a drop shot. You could also use this on a Carolina rig. And I know drop shotting and Carolina rig fishing may not be as popular with inshore anglers, but it works. It really works. We're going to do a video on that, I promise you. So if you want to catch fish like we did in the show here um, on baits like this, go check out sodiumusa.com and get a hold of a few of these trick shots. I think if you add these to your, to your arsenal, you're going to do really well this spring and early summer on tailing fish. All right, if you like what you see here on Flats Class YouTube and you are learning stuff, please come over here and subscribe. I need more of you in my virtual classroom. I can't do these videos any more frequently or any more consistently without you guys participating. All right, that's all I got today. See you on the next one.